from the Treasure Coast Lexus Studios at WPSL. It's Joanne's World of Nutrition with Joanna Gusto. Treasure Coast Lexus, US 1, south of Midway Road, Fort Pierce. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, you're urged to like and share them on Facebook. It's time now for Nutrition World in downtown Fort Pierce across from City Hall in the Arcade Building, the historic Arcade Building. And, of course, the show is hosted by the proprietor of Nutrition World. It's Joanne Augusto. This program was pre-recorded. Well, hello, everyone. This is so awesome. We have such a amazing guest today that we are going to pre-record it so we don't miss out on all this awesome information. Well, this is an again and again one today. To oh, yeah. To. We mm. definitely will uh, play it again. So I apologize for any of our usual live callers that love chatting with us, but we'll just have to um, have you enjoy all this info and call in on another show if you have a question about it. And, and the cool thing about it is, is that, uh, well, I, I said this is a pre-recorded show, but guess who just walked into the building? None other than Joanna Gusto from Nutrition World. Good morning. Good morning. I well, can't get a headset out of that. <laughs> oh, no, I'll get you one. You go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and All hook right. you up. All right. Hey, everyone. Happy Thursday. Yes, I was stuck on Orange Avenue behind some type of, um, I don't know what kind of truck it was, but let's just say it looked like they were collecting um, different artifacts from all the parts of the world and it was yes, a garbage truck, it, wasn't it? Well, no, know. it was it was someone's personal uh, truck, and they have everything and anything in the back of the truck, and they were mm. going rather, rather slow, and I was kind of stuck, and so there we go. I'll bet it was somebody from Swap Shop just bought a bunch of stuff Well, it's cheap. so <laughs> funny because I was thinking, I was like, okay, there are um, some people that just love your show, well, lots of people that love your show and collecting lots of goodies. Um, and then I also uh, promised Elena a little mommy-daughter uh, time today. So she's here in the waiting room uh, hoping to... Uh, you got her in the green room in there. Yeah, in the green room. Yeah, let me just... Well, you know, this, you, this you've done this before here. because, you know, the, the youngsters, they love to see what it looks like inside of a radio. And they, I used to think that the guy was inside of the radio staying nice and warm in between the tubes. <laughs> 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 there you go. Being a there kid up go. north at the time, you know, that was expected. Though. Uh, well, it's so funny because, you know, when she was on the show just a few weeks back, um, it was like so exciting for mm -hmm. her because she had never been here. Now it's like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, I got this, you know. Mm -hmm. But, yes, yeah, so today, um, yeah, happy Thursday once again. Thank you so much for listening. And I am so glad uh, to be here today and that we don't have to have a pre recorded show. But, Cliff? Take notes on that one because next week is July 4th and I will be on an official vacation without my kids. There will be something there. So. I, I, I will probably not be here too. So. Wow, we're all playing hooky, huh? Very well, nice. You know, so, sometimes I can't. Sometimes the swap shop warrants that I be here no matter what. And okay. In that case, you know, but... But sometimes the, the audience actually lets me take a break on the 4th of right. July. I like your T-shirt today. That is super cool. I love the colors. And well, it's a moose. Who sees a moose around these parts this ever, This is right? a, from Alaska. Uh, yeah, I figured that. It's beautiful. I really love the colors. Okay. Purple's my favorite color, so I love oh, it. Okay. All right, so without further ado, we must start our breathing exercise. And Cliff, I definitely need it this morning. I need to, well, <laughs> I no. need to focus and breathe and get centered. Um, so if anyone else feels like I do a little bit, stuck in traffic behind every red light, a little impatient or a little frustrated or a little anxious, this is the perfect tool to use to get grounded again, get yes. focused, Especially get your after blood pressure regulated. Moon. Yes. Yeah. Some weird, weird junk has been happening um, in the last 24 hours. So oh, okay. I definitely uh, think we should 
do at least four counts. Four counts. So okay. for any newbies, welcome to listening to the show. My mm-hmm. name is Joanne. I own Nutrition World in Fort Pierce, mm-hmm. and I preach all day long about breathing, something we all take for granted. So and, 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 and nine out of ten health officials <laughs> uh, <laughs> highly believe, recommend highly it. recommend breathing. <laughs> that other one that we that we mentioned. Yes, uh, and Harvard actually spent money on it. studying breathing. Yeah. Yes, that deep breathing helps us. What and a shocker! Okay. It's okay to call it meditation, even yes. if it's only for a few seconds. Exactly. It's like, you know, uh, awake meditation. All right. Yeah. So Cliff is going to count us. We're only going to use our nose. So please don't use your mouth. We're going to do five in, hold for five, exhale for five. And we're going to do it about uh, three times mm-hmm. just to get us all centered and focused and on mm-hmm. our game. Okay. Okay. Exhale all the junk Let out, the rushing, all out. the craziness, the. Uh, okay. <sighs> Here we go. And you ready, Cliff? Inhale, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. You holding? Two, three, four, five. Release. One, two, three, four, five. Again, in. Two, three, four, five. Hold for one, two, three, four, five. Release. One, two, three, four, five. One more time. In. One, two, Two, three, four, five. Hold. Four, three, two, one. Release. Two, three, four, five. Wow, and that's should be perfect. Fine. Thank you so much, Cliff. I I seriously feel so much better just from that quick exercise. Um, the one thing, if anyone does watch us live, I want to mention that. Um, one thing that I do with the breathing is I touch my fingertips. It's meditative, yeah, and it really that. regulates blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a little trick you can do, as well as really try to um, pretend that someone's holding your shoulders down. So don't tense your neck muscles and your shoulder muscles. Really relax them. Mm-hmm. Um, we really hold a lot of stress in our neck and in our shoulders, and then we get headaches, and then all of a sudden we're taking headache medicine that has side effects with our liver and our kidneys. So it's like this vicious cycle. So breathing, relaxing shoulders, drinking water could avoid some serious um, time, money, and issues with headaches and pain relievers. All right, so you ready for the topic of the day, Cliff? And it's your favorite to- topic. My favorite topic. Yes. Mm, what could that I be? changed. I was going to do a whole nother show, and then having uh, five kids in the household last night, um, mm-hmm. and the whole addiction of one certain substance led me to today's topic. Can Uh-oh. you imagine what adults and five children might be screaming for after dinner that they really want badly? Oh, sugar. Thank you very much. So what I realized... I'll bet you some people thought something else for a minute. There, oh, geez. <laughs> well, that's forget, why I mentioned sugar addiction. and adults. Yes. Yeah, and addiction. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the topic today is definitely going to be sugar addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to be really careful about using the word addiction when I spoke about sugar um, because it's so widely used and accepted, and especially with... Um, teachers and and parents and grandparents as a reward system as a symbolism of love Mm -hmm. but make no mistake it's deadly Mm -hmm. it's addictive and i am not gonna haha sugarcoat it Ah, sugarcoat i used to i used to why did i used to because i was addicted yeah and And it was politically correct yes and the thing is is that if Anyone listening right now might be like, oh, come on, you know, it's one life to live, I think. There is so much research now, ironclad, definitive research, that sugar is as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than some of the street drugs that are out there. Absolutely. So we really have to take this topic seriously. And if not for us, if we feel like we don't have the strength or the willpower to make a change in our life, For our children, our grandchildren, um, people that we're caretakers for, we have to take this topic seriously. So I definitely want to um, stress that I am preaching from the vulnerability and weakness of a sugar addict. I find that, like, I was doing so good for a long time. Like, yes, I don't really 
crave processed sugar like some others, but still sugar is hidden in everything. So like I would get like, you know, um, I don't know uh, what's like, I have so many favorite sweet, yummy things, but all of a sudden every day I had to have something sweet. Well, you know, and they have to hide it. And, and if they can't hide it, they just call it something else. Exactly. Like, do you remember uh, Tony Tiger's Kellogg's Sugar Frosted Flakes? Oh, there, great. Well, Holy moly. you yeah. notice they don't call them Sugar Frosted Flakes anymore. They just call them Frosted, frosted flakes. flakes. Yeah, wonder and it's it's magic yeah. dust on them. Yeah. Mm. So so why does it have to be concealed? And why do we have to reveal yeah. this? Because well, because people are dying. They're not dying right away. It doesn't kill you in an instant, but right. by golly, over the years. Well, Cliff, that's that's the exact point I want to make. So I call sugar the sugar monster. Okay. Because I believe sugar in its beginning form. Mm -hmm in the way that nature intended to be is not where the poison is from, is not where the issue comes from. Mm -hmm. Like everything else, the issue is from the processing and the industrialization of it and the overconsumption of it. But the problem is it just takes a little bit to trigger us to make that vicious cycle start where we want more and more. So, so that's where we don't have that shutoff switch. So the first part of the discussion is I want to make clear that I am talking about most of the sugar that's consumed in our country is processed. It's very rare that someone is just consuming unprocessed sugar unless they're fully aware of the damaging and ravaging effects of sugar. So they've already made a step to remove it out. So people, for instance, that are on a paleo diet or a ketogenic diet or have diabetes, they will, you know, make a huge effort um, to stop, you know, um, seeing the effects of um, sugar and consuming sugar. But when you um, can think about three of your past days, so today's Thursday, I want you to just think about Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and how much sugar you consumed. But remember, sugar is hidden in cold cuts. It's hidden in bread. It's hidden in meat products. Like for instance, chicken, fish, beef, it's pumped up with sugar. Now some of our animals are eating our leftover processed candy and sugar instead of grass or natural feed um, because it's cheaper and there's an overabundance available. So sugar is hidden in all our food supply, even foods that you would never think of. So go to your last three days if you don't think you have an issue with sugar and see how much sugar you had. So one of the things that I look out for for myself and my children that we are having too much sugar is we're waking up craving it. So if you wake up and you crave starch, so you're craving a bagel, a muffin, um, waffle, pancake, or a, a very sweet creamer in your coffee, right away, it doesn't matter if the doctor says your sugars are high or you have diabetes, you have a sugar issue, okay? The natural instinct for us in the morning, that's why our bodies run a little more acidic, is to have something much more stable, like a protein consumed, uh, a, a food that's high in protein or healthy fats, so if right away we're crawling out of bed wanting to grab a donut or a starch, that's the first sign that you need to take action to watch out for sugars in your diet. So look at the last three days and kind of take a journal and see how much of your days were around. Now I'm not talking about scooping white sugar into a cup of coffee or an iced tea. Fruit, um, cut up fruit, fruit juice, Gatorade, sodas, sweet teas, um, salad dressing, um, starch, like a side of bread. It's scary. The sugar is in everything. So you definitely want to, um, you definitely want to um, take a look at how much sugar you're consuming because the ravaging effects... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Because um, the ravaging effects are, um, 
are devastating to your liver, your kidneys. Um, Cliff, have you noticed, this is one thing I've noticed at my store, um, and it's getting scary and scarier. Females and males are coming in with that beer belly um, oh, where yeah. it's like they'll be thin everywhere else, but it will look like they have like a basketball in their belly. Right. And, and, and a lot of that comes from drinking way too much well, beer. But well, this is this is the thank you for stating that because that was how it was taught in nutrition class. Mm-hmm. If someone had a distended belly. So this is back a long time ago. They really didn't have a lot of terminology for things. It was basically you assume. They're drinking a yeasty alcoholic product. Yeah. And that's it. Well, do you know now it's completely different? Yeah. What now, is that because alcohol pro- product contain? Well, yeah. So this is the thing is that sugar is metabolized just like alcohol in the liver. So I have plenty of people that will say, well, Joanne, I don't drink. I don't drink. You could be a teetotaler and still have a beer belly. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Isn't that sad? So here's yeah. these people that are walking around looking, unfortunately, like they're over-consuming alcohol mm-hmm. because they have these distended bellies. They can't figure out why. They think they're fat. But it's just basically a symptom of having excessive sugar, mm-hmm. and they're getting so distended because their liver is overwhelmed. Your liver has to process, it has to metabolize toxins, um, natural substances, medication, drugs, everything you take in, the liver has to make it safe for the human body. And sugar is acted just like alcohol in the liver. So not only is it going to make you look like you might be an alcoholic, but it's also going to have that same damaging effect to your liver. So if you're wondering why you've been diagnosed with fatty liver or liver disease and you've never touched alcohol or you haven't in a long time, I guarantee you that's the reason. Because we all think, unless we're consuming Twinkies or or jelly beans all day, that we don't have a sugar problem. But I'm the first to say, definitely it doesn't take much to be a sugarholic. Um, For me, it's 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock comes around, boy. It's like, holy moly, I feel like I could eat any form of sugar that's humanly possible. Well, I, I remember so. myself uh, that, 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 that it wasn't really the exactly the belly, but below the rib cage. Well, that's the, the rib, area. That's yes. where the liver is, and, and it was like a shelf right yes. there. In fact, you could sit in a chair it's, and set a plate on it. Yeah, <laughs> I call it the belly because people, it's just, but yeah. you're right, Cliff. That's exactly where the area is. You know, the liver gets, um, you know, it, it could be fatty liver, but the liver doesn't have to be fatty or grow to get the distension. It's basically um, way too much sugar. And so, uh, oh, we have a caller. Awesome. Good morning, Sarah. How are you? Yeah, hi, Joanne. I was just down in the Florida Keys, and I got back last night, and I bought, um, how, are you familiar with the Lara bars? Yes, um, that's the raw um, the raw bar, right? Yeah, um, well, yeah, uh, they they actually have no sugar, like the ingredients for one bar. Um, it's called the cashew cookie, and it's just cashew and dates. They use some uh, like a sweet fruit without any added sugar, and then the other bar, which is the key lime pie, it has um, dates and cashew. Key lime, unsweetened coconut, and key lime juice added. And then some of them have uh, another bar, which is the, um, and some, of course, um, you know, they're um, also, they have the organic bars. Are they yummy? Um, Have you tried them all? Oh, yes. I brought back, they charged me extra on the plane. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Yes, because I was overloaded. Yeah, anyway. I used to sell the Lara bars um, oh, at my I'm at the you. Sable Palm location. Yeah, they were pretty popular. Yes, and and then one has the dates, the almonds, and sweetened uh, apples, and it has the turmeric and the ginger added, and they are delicious. Well, Sarah, I don't know if you mentioned. I know you listened to last week's show, and mm-hmm. I I said if you, as a female, if you consume three dates a day, you get yes. so much hormonal balance. It's wonderful. You get that oxytocin feeling where you feel happy and balanced so the lara bars definitely using dates as a sweetener can contribute to the health of the hormonal system as well um but it's thank you for mentioning lara bars because there is healthy sweet 
options that are not processed. But I want to stress that you don't want to eat a Lara bar on top of having, you know, a processed bagel or, you know, a, a, a heavy creamed uh, coffee drink that has sweetener in it. So uh, I appreciate um, the input, Sarah. And I'm glad you're back. And oh, lucky you going to the Keys. That sounds like a nice trip. Got it. Okay. Are you still there, Sarah? Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I lost you a little bit there for a second. Okay. Um, Bye. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Have an awesome day. Happy Thank July you. 4th. <laughs> Bye, Jen. Bye, Joanne. Bye. All right. So here we go. So we're, um, so Sarah made a great point. There are healthy options to have, especially if you're in, in the transitional time from um, getting off your addiction of sugar. But I usually say that the first step is the awareness, okay, just like any other addiction. So you want to be aware of how much sweetness you have in your life. And you want to start eliminating the things that won't hurt as bad. So like where I plan on always consuming chocolate for the rest of my life. Um, so I'll, I would rather give up, say, bread. Like I would rather say, okay, bye-bye to bread than give up on my chocolate. So I'm very honest with myself with that. So look at, you know, steps each and every day to be... Um, more compliant to a healthier body and um, avoiding the starchy foods. Starchy foods seem for most to be an easier way to eliminate. So for instance, if you're having bread products with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, maybe you can start with saying, okay, I'm just going to do the bread product for lunch. Um, but keep in mind, it all does add up. So there was one statistic that I found that I thought was just mind-blowing. So in the 1700s, the average person had about four pounds of sugar per, per year. So four pounds of sugar per year in the 1700s. Cliff, take a guess how many pounds now in America the average person consumes. Well, back in the 1700s, they didn't have sugar refineries, and you couldn't go to the store and buy it. You probably got it mostly from uh, from natural fruit. Today, oh my goodness! Yeah, just take a guess. I'd 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 say four pounds a month. Okay, well let's see. Okay, even more than that. Really? So the average person now consumes over over oh. over 77 pounds of sugar per person. Isn't that insane? Per year or per per year? Yeah. So it used to be four pounds of sugar per year per person. Wow. Now it's seventy-seven pounds. So that's about twenty-two teaspoons or more of sugar per day that the average American consumes. Well, a co Coca-Cola is fifty uh, fifty uh, grams of sugar per. Yes. Can. Well, and that's why I want to. I'm glad you mentioned Coca-Cola, like ginger ale. Okay, so. This is, I'm kind of putting this out there to like parents right now because I get this a lot when I'm working with parents. Like, oh, I don't give my kids soda. I just give them ginger ale and Gatorade. Uh -oh. Or so they'll say Sprite. So I want to make this point. Ginger ale mm -hmm. has 35 grams of sugar okay. in a can. And Gatorade, for the very smallest bottles that you can get, have 25 grams of sugar. Mm. Okay, so j please by no means think that Sprite, ginger ale, Gatorade is a healthy substitute. So yes, the Gatorade is intended to have some electrolytes in there, but between the sugar and the artificial colors, please do not fall for the fact that you think it's a healthy beverage. Um, if you're concerned with electrolytes and replacing things, or if your children are very involved in sports, there's much healthier options to do. Um, just call me at the store, call Jen, we'll tell you about healthy options um, to replace the Gatorade. So I just thought that was insane, the difference. So that's why some people will say to me, oh, well, we've been consuming sugar for thousands of years and you know, it really doesn't make a difference. And I kind of wonder how they could be making that, that, that makes sense to them, except for that's how an addict acts. If you really think about it. A little it, denial, a couple of lies. Yeah, you defend your behavior. And I know I do it all the time. Well, I'm just having a little. Um, but just it a is, again. a little bit won't hurt. 
keeping away from the processed sugar is the first step, okay? And then cutting back on the amount. There, our body can handle about six teaspoons a day healthy. So if you stick to six teaspoons a day of, of sugar, and hopefully in unprocessed form. So that's like, so that's not accounting for whole fruit. So if you want to have a little whole fruit, that's not counted in the six uh, teaspoons. Cool. But if you add six teaspoons to your day, hopefully spread out throughout your day, not at one sitting. That's about six your, grams of sugar, right? Yeah, your, um, it's 24 grams of sugar. Four, There's four okay. grams of sugar per teaspoon. Okay. So that's about 24 grams in your day. Um, that your liver can handle and your body can metabolize correctly. But keep in mind that uh, sugar, fructose, especially processed, um, the liver reacts just like it does for alcohol. And our liver, it's responsible for cleaning our whole body. So if you shut down that function or you make that liver burden by your constant consumption all day long of sugar, when it has no time to do its regular job, your body will get sick. Um, unfortunately, now the studies are ironclad. There's no gray area anymore. So they call it, you know, metabolic syndrome or metabolic dysfunction. These are all conditions that are common to the average American now, which is basically weight gain, especially what they call abdominal obesity, where that visceral fat is in front of your belly, like you were saying, Cliff, you know, rib cage down, yep. and it becomes its own entity, its own organ system, creating havoc with the hormones, havoc with your um, moods. I mean, who doesn't know someone now that's either completely stressed out, depressed, anxious, suicidal, can't sleep, there is always someone that's either right in your household or right at your workplace or, or a neighbor or a close friend that is suffering from one of these conditions. High blood sugar, high blood pressure, cholesterol imbalance. These are all common symptoms of excessive sugar. So anything beyond those six teaspoons a day, the body cannot handle. So we definitely really need to take this seriously. Now, most of the time, people are talking about um, sugar um, cutting back until they lose some weight. So when we get back from the break, I'm going to talk about weight loss and sugar and the correlation between that. So um, stay tuned, and we will be back in just a minute. You're listening to Joanne's World of Nutrition, brought to you by Nutrition World in the historic arcade building in downtown Fort Pierce. Back. Hiding the Treasure Coast in health, one person at a time. That's their motto at Joanne's Nutrition World, Suite 121, in the historic arcade building on US 1, downtown Fort Pierce. Joanne brings more than 25 years of experience in the natural health industry right here to you. Take advantage of this free personal guide to wellness and good health. Meet with Joanne herself and get started. Nutrition World always provides you with the hottest new product lines, natural and homeopathic remedies, herbals, and best of all, expert advice from the people who care. Call Joanne at 464-3598, 464-3598, and learn the correlation between diet and great health. Stop in today. The expert guidance to health is always free at Nutrition World. Nutrition World, Suite 121 in the Arcade Building, US 1, downtown Fort Pierce. WPSL Treasure Coast Weather with meteorologist Glenn Glazer is brought to you this hour by Seacoast Air Conditioning. The chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms moving from west to east will increase through the afternoon hours here on the Treasure Coast. A few storms could be strong and some rainfall will be heavy. High temperatures will reach the upper 80s and maybe 90 degrees in a few spots this afternoon with the heat index in the upper 90s. Winds will stay light out of the southeast and rainfall will slowly taper off during the evening hours. I'm WPTV Storm Team. 
Chief Vibe Meteorologist Glenn Glazer for WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Weather this hour is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning, your hometown air conditioning company since 1982. For repairs or a whole new system, call 772-466-2400. Comfort crisis, don't roast, call Seacoast. We now return to Joanne's World of Nutrition on WPSL. Once again, here's your host, Joanne Augusto. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate you taking time to spend with me. Uh, today's topic is the devastating um, effects of sugar. So it's really, really dangerous. And my main point I want to get across is that we are all susceptible to the dangers of sugar, um, no matter what our genetics are and our health is or our weight. Uh, that's the biggest thing. People think because they're thin that their sugar is not affecting them. Well, I can eat sugar. I'm thin. I don't have a weight problem. It's damaging no matter your size. It doesn't matter if you're a perfect size zero or if you're 400 pounds. Sugar is damaging to all. It does not have racism going on inside the body. It just basically um, destroys, you know, your artery walls, your veins. Yes, equal (laughs) opportunity destroyer. So, and if everyone knows my personality, I usually don't try to sound so like, oh my God, fear and doom and gloom. But this, I see it in my own life. I see it in my children's life. I see it with family members, people I love that just are defending and accepting of their sugar addictions because we associate it with love and reward and it's it's a benefit and we only think if we're healthy we're not drinking smoking or doing drugs so we're okay we're not doing those three things I hear that all the time. I say, so how's your health? Well, I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't do drugs. So they think they're off the hook. That's not an answer. Yeah, they they, they (laughs) definitely think they're off the hook. And I was one of those people as well. I was like, well, geez, I never go to fast food or I don't do this. But I'll be the first one in line to kill wins for a big bag of chocolate. So, uh, (laughs) you know, you really... Dark chocolate, semi-sweet. Of course, of course, dark, always. I definitely love my dark chocolate. So... So the show is to point out that the science is there. So if you need science to convince you, it is there. Okay. Um, The science is there. The effects on the body is from head to toe. So there is um, no ravaging that um, gets left out. So every organ system, artery wall, vein wall, um, it all is affected by the ravages of sugar. The effects do happen slowly, okay, for some, but it is still happening. So remember, sugar is extremely acidic. I don't think on the scale anything is more. Do you believe sugar and stress, almost that same acidity effect in the body? And Mm. where they say stress kills. So I just think that's kind of funny how they both have a very high acidic ash when you're very stressed out. Mm -hmm. Um, Even without consuming anything, you're creating acid ash in your body. Acid breeds disease and brittle bones um, and decaying of every system. So you're going to age a lot faster. Disease cannot live in an alkaline body, right? You've said that many times And it's so true, and it's completely proven. But again people find out what creates alkalinity and right away they run for the hills because what creates alkalinity in nature is predominantly vegetables. But I want to put a shout out to my friend Bradley Brown who um, he's in always at all the farmers markets with his amazing organic produce but his shop which is on right on um, US 1 it's that little corner store on uh, Flea Market Avenue, is it, Cliff? It's Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Flea Market Avenue. It's where all those, those little shops are by that big cowboy boot place um, right on US 1 in Fort Pierce. Um, but Bradley, Bradley Brown Organics, if you Google it or look on the Internet, you'll get his address. Okay. He now has a vegan restaurant inside his shop. So if you are bored of just making a simple salad for dinner to get your vegetables in, you really don't know how to make vegetables taste good or look good, and you know you need to consume more, this is a perfect way to do it. When you go to any vegan restaurants or delis, 
you get ideas, you get inspired that vegetables can taste really good. They can have amazing sauces on them that aren't filled with, you know, bad hydrogenated oils or sugars. Um, so I am definitely going there today. He sent me the menu and I wanted to just um, mention a few really quick because even if you're not into like vegan food or health food and this is a whole new world for you, they have smoothies that have jackfruit in them that look incredible. A wild mushroom sandwich with herbed aioli sauce, sprouted quinoa salad with green mango slaw, um, a sushi burger with wasabi mayo, Mediterranean hummus with um, all this Israel salad on the side and tahini dressing, um, sunflower sprouts, uh, watermelon gazpacho, eggplant uh, nachos, green goddess guacamole. So this kind of stuff gets me excited and makes me hungry. Um, so, you know, eating vegetables can be fun. You can make it creative. So sugar um, really creates acidity. So we need to offset it by a calm lifestyle, a meditative lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle of activity, sunshine, walking, and lots of veggies. Before the break, I mentioned about weight loss. That's normally when we start saying, okay, I won't do as many sweets. I need to lose some weight, which is an awesome motivator. Awesome. There's nothing wrong with being motivated by weight loss. But I just want to stress that you do not have to have a, a weight issue or be even overweight by five pounds to have a sugar problem. So, and the other thing too, is that if you try to cons keep your sugar consumption up when you're trying to lose weight, fructose itself, it fools your metabolism by turning off your body's appetite control system. So you will really never feel satisfied. It's kind of like that theory where, you know, and I get this if ever Easter time and I sneak a few jelly beans, like two or three jelly beans are never enough. You can consume the whole bag. Or when you go to the movies and you eat the whole bag of, you know, Sour Patch or Twizzlers, you wonder why, like, oh my God, that's, you know, a hundred grams of sugar I just consumed, but I still feel like I want more because sugar unlike healthy fats and protein, never, ever shut off that mechanism, that gremlin, they call it, that tells you you're okay, you're satisfied, you can stop now. So sugar, again, just like any addiction, it wants more to feed into the system over and over and over again. So really watch out for that. Just a little bit sends you spinning out of control. And if you have ever heard of candida, which I'm definitely going to do a show on candida, candida is devastating. Candida is an overgrowth of yeast, and it occurs in men and women. One of the main reasons for the distended belly for over sugar consumption or alcohol. Its cause is not totally clear. It's a combination cause of medication, um, even like a regular... Um, over-the-counter drugs, you're just, um, your toxic burden in your body can't handle it anymore, so the yeast is overgrown. Um, antibiotic use used to be the only reason that it was blamed for for candida, so if you ever took antibiotics, you would say, take probiotics so you don't get candida or a yeast infection. But there's so much more involved. It's not just antibiotics that cause candida. So with the candida, it can go in your bloodstream. It can cause blackouts, time lapse. Like I have had customers that don't remember driving distances <clears throat> because the candida kind of um, makes their, their brain feel cloudy. Um, and it's really scary. And do you know, Cliff, um, it's really interesting, but the sun and, and I, you know how um, yeast, it grows with warmth, okay? okay? Uh -huh. I find that when I used to be in New York, I mean, candida, of course, was around. But in Florida, it's so much bigger. It's yeah. so much bigger. And I believe it's from all the moisture and the heat, yeah. all the humidity. So, and again, this doesn't have to be an external thing. Um, candida can be cellular, systemic through the blood system and make you feel really, really bad. So you definitely want to starve that system and stop the sugar. 
Um, and also the fructose they're showing. Um, so a lot of times there's a huge controversy around sugar and fructose and high fructose corn syrup. There's so much um, publicity trying to get us to think that fructose is just sugar from fruit and it's super healthy. It's just like eating an apple. And that's so completely not true. So it's like saying that, you know, a piece of bologna is the same thing as having, you know, um, a piece of fish. It's completely different. So the fructose studies that are out completely show that it has a direct and indirect a form of creating um, dependence and habituation. So that means they see in our brain centers that it's just like any other drug and they're using heroin as the reference drug that it creates that same dependency. And I know there was commercials out there that they were putting out there showing people how bad sugar was, but then I don't know. I'm not sure if it's politics, haha, but all of a sudden those commercials went off air. But <laughs> yeah, so you definitely want to take it serious because the fructose was the one study, but I believe it's all sugars, uh, will create that same um, dependency like heroin does. If someone suspects they might be addicted to sugar, how would they know? Well, I use that breakfast reference. Um, so there's two, there's two things. So normally if you wake up craving sugars, that's right away a give, a give you know, a give. If you can't go three days without, so three days without any form of sugar, without either sounding like someone that's quitting smoking, snapping, irritability, impatience, then you know you're an addict of sugar. Extreme violence. So, oh. yeah, well, just like, you know. <laughs> Like, I know um, that, again, like, you know, if I don't have it, I'm aware of my issue. So I try not to, like, um, put an emotional spin on it. Yeah. But most people will come in the store. So you, as you know, I'm in the arcade building. So I have a lot of upstairs office workers. So they do their lunch. And then typically between 2.30 to 4, they crash. So whatever they had, their soda pop at lunch or their iced tea, so now they're crashing. So they come in the store, and do you know, some of them can't even make eye contact because their sugars are, like, leading their path, that they grab a candy bar, you know, the health food candy bar, you yeah, know, which yeah. still has 25 grams of sugar. They grab that, and they're, like, consuming it before they even walk out the door because their body is in, a, just like any addict, is screaming for to be fed again and so that's definitely a sign right there well like what well, somebody yeah. going to let's say fast food and order large fries and two hamburgers and a diet coke yeah oh uh, <laughs> well that's the artificial sweetness that's a whole they, nother um b they think set they of can problems. go crazy with uh, with everything else and just go easy on the it doesn't work that way though because yeah. sugar is hidden in everything. it's really you know it seriously is um the most complicated um, you know, I say complicated. It's not. It's simple mm -hmm. if you just accept it. If you yeah. accept that sugar was never meant to be consumed the way it is or processed the way it is, then it's simple. You just say, like back in the 1700s, that if there is a day that I would like to prepare something like an apple pie or chocolate brownies or enjoy a sweet tea, there will be a day for it. But we don't buy gallons of it from the supermarket and give it to our children, consume it all day long. It was never meant to be part of our diet. It was meant, as the wealthy put, you know, it was meant as a reward system. And we've abused that. Now that reward system is part of our diet. Um, so, you know, I, I grew up basically with, you know, Sundays was the day where we have the dessert. We have the homemade cake or, you know, um, I don't even think my mom ever made chocolate desserts like brownies or anything. But everyone understands, I hope, that sugar was never meant to be an everyday occurrence. Um, so that's the first thing we have to accept, that it is dangerous and it was never meant to be consumed every day. And even though you might not think the things you're suffering with them are a direct effect of it. It's just because politics got in the way for us to be able to say it. We couldn't yeah. say, you know, between the dairy industry and the sugar industry and the meat industry, um, how our food is being industrialized and processed now 
it is hurting us. We were we were basically muffled mm-hmm. um, from speaking the truth because those industries were worth billions of dollars. Yeah, and you know that's just the way sugar is, folks. So I mean, if it were just yep. invented today, it'd never get approval of the FDA. No, exactly, no, no. and so um, so we definitely want to um, so to answer your question, Cliff. Really, it's I assume that if you're consuming sugar mm-hmm. on a daily basis, you're an addict. Right. Um, only because, and I, I use that word, you know, it sounds like such a strong word, but it is true. Because yeah. if you try to stop, it's almost impossible for most people. Um, like I mentioned, the ketogenic diet, phenomenal diet if it's done properly. Dr. Mercola, I love him, and he's in full support of the ketogenic diet. But most of my customers do that diet for a few days and then they binge. Then all of a sudden they're eating, you know, like, you know, a whole loaf of bread or a big bowl of pretzels. Just like everything and else that people get addicted to. Yeah. They'll justify why and just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Exactly. But the reason that I worry so much about sugar is because people are not aware of how they label things and they trick consumers. Yeah. Because the sugar, when you consume a product that has any amount of sugar in it, just like salt or unhealthy fat, the senses that you have been grown accustomed to, so your fat sensor, your sweet sensor, your salt sensor, are satisfied, so you will buy more of their product. So they will put something on the front of the label to mislead you, to make you think you're consuming something that won't hurt you. Like the word diet. Yeah, diet, natural, Mm -hmm. um, no added sugar. No added sugar sugar. doesn't mean no sugar. It means no sugar added to it was already there. My biggest example with that one, especially for infants, I can't believe this is still happening in 2018, Mm. but parents are giving infants or small toddlers uh, juice. So if you go onto any pediatric website, it will strongly advise never to give your child a glass of juice. So um, we were never, so for instance, grape juice. So a small glass of grape juice that has like say 27 grams of sugar. We were never meant to consume a big bushel of grapes. Like if you sat down with your infant, it would never eat like two big bags of grapes. But if you remove the beautiful layer of phytonutrients and fiber and just press them into their simplest form of sugar, yeah, they're going to gulp it down. And that's what their taste buds now are used to. So they need that sensation every day as they're growing up. So when you give them something that doesn't um, satisfy their sweet sensor, the fat sensor, and the salt sensor, they're going to be like, oh, this is disgusting. This is gross. This has no flavor. You know, um, why are you torturing me? So if you can catch anyone and everyone in the beginning stages of life, um, that's the best chance you have so they can feel the difference. So if I drink a glass of juice, oh my gosh, I get a piercing headache. Um, my, my sugar crashes right away. It's horrible. Uh, the human body's never intended to consume so much sugar at one time. So that's a perfect example. But if you look at some of those bottles of juice out there, it cracks me up. Oh my gosh, they will lead you to believe that if you consume their juice, you're going to have anti-aging benefits and antioxidants, um, so many health benefits, and it's incredible, where it's all a misleading um, uh, advertisement. So please, um, I stress this over and over again. Whenever you're buying anything, please turn around the packaging and just look at the sugar grams. And this applies to shopping in my store or any health food store. I don't care how fancy and healthy and gourmet the store looks. Just turn around the packaging and check the sugar grams. Like the candy bars I just spoke about. Yes, they're organic chocolate. They're dark chocolate. They're gluten-free. They're dairy-free. They're really pretty packaging. They still had 20-something grams of sugar in them. So... That's processed. But like Sarah mentioned earlier on the call, Lara bars. So that's unprocessed. So if you use dates and seeds to buffer the sugar with natural healthy fat, um, natural forms of protein or greens added, 
there you go. That's unprocessed. The body can metabolize it much easier. And there's fiber that's naturally occurring in these sweet foods. Like look at fruit. All fruit has lots of fiber in it. So, so you basically have what nature intended you to have. So when you eat one apple, you get just a little sweetness. You get all the fiber, all the um, pre-probiotics, the nutrients. It's something healthy. And I am speaking about non-GMO organic fruit. <laughs> um, so that's the way nature intended it. So not dried apple pieces, not, you know, apple juice or, you know, these fruit um, bowls that, you know, sometimes my son, if I buy cut up fruit from Publix, you know, they have that buy one, get one free. I'm definitely a sucker for that special. So I buy that. He'll eat the whole bowl. And I'll look at him. I'm like, honey, you do realize that that is still not very healthy <laughs> just because it's fruit. If you eat all that melon that's all sugar without skin and, you know, no fiber to buffer it, no um, protein or healthy fats, bam, you just basically flooded your body with, you know, at least 80 grams of sugar. So do not be fooled. Um, if you crave it, there's a good chance you need to moderate yourself from consuming it. So that's like the number one rule. So um, we just have a couple minutes left. So here I've been just talking about doom and gloom and all this negative about sugar. But some people need but to know the truth, and the truth doesn't always fly with everybody. For some I reason. know, I know, and I just hope everyone really listened and know that I'm speaking from the heart, and everything I always speak about is because I've experienced it myself. And I just know... When I get back hooked into that starchy, sugary world, my moods are so much less stable. My sleep is not as good. My inflammation goes up. Um, I get headaches. So, and that's happening for me for a small amount of sugar. So I can't even imagine if your whole day revolves around starch and sweetness. It, it's just, it's going to be debilitating and it's going to catch up to you. Okay, but I'm supposed to be on the good side now. Yeah. Okay, so... So here's some tricks. Lots and lots and lots of fiber. Um, fiber is always commonly you think of when you have trouble going to the bathroom or for weight loss. But fiber buffers sugar release. So if you are having a difficult time cutting back on sweet, starchy foods in your life, add fiber or pick the sweet that has a little fiber in it. So my, my biggest joke is that, you know, I'll always have, you know, something um, like, say, uh, chia seeds or hemp seeds that are mixed with my chocolate bar um, because it's healthy fats and fiber. Believe it or not, it makes a huge difference. It slows down the release. And remember, sugar has been linked with Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, um, all these terrible brain diseases. So the brain loves fat and water. So if you flood your body with fiber, healthy fats, lots of water, your blood sugar will get more stable so you won't quickly grab that sweet to get your sugars back to normal. There's that old saying, you know, don't shop um, when you're hungry. It's the same thing with sugar. Is before you eat the sugar, tell yourself, okay, maybe I can have it, but first I have to have something healthy, just like we do for our kids. Okay, yeah. first you eat dinner before dessert. Eat all your Try greens. that trick. Because then you'll stabilize the sugars more and hopefully eat less. So, everyone, I really hope everyone works on this. Breathe deep. Drink lots of water. Have a great July 4th. And I hope you enjoy the recorded show. And talk to you guys a couple weeks. All right. And folks, 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 be sure to stop by Nutrition World in the historic arcade building in downtown Fort Pierce. Across from City Hall on US 1 in between Orange Avenue and Avenue A. And you know what? Joanne loves to answer your questions. Even if you show up in her store and ask them, she'll be glad to, to uh, entertain your uh, your curiosity about Joanne's World of Nutrition. Heard every Thursday morning at the 10 o'clock hour right here on Digital 1590.